Welcome to the FileAid for DB2 Browse and Edit Basics module. Here you will learn how to set parameters for and get started with a browse or edit session. Although this is a browse and edit basics module, the focus of this and all other browse edit modules will be on editing, which is more exciting than just browsing. The differences are generally in the command set and tend to be obvious. For example, the find command is valid in both browse and edit, while the change command is valid in edit only. The user's authorization to change comes directly from DB2 and not from FileAid for DB2. We begin at the primary option menu. You may want to verify here that you are working with the correct DB2 subsystem, although it may be changed in other places as well. To change, blank it out and press Enter to display a subsystem selection window. Select the desired subsystem, then close the window. A confirmation message will appear to the upper right. We will choose option 0 to view the various defaults and user parameters. Verify, and change if necessary, the current SQL ID and schema values. Then select option 1 to review the Browse Edit Display options. The first group relates to treatment of key columns. Indicating foreign key columns while an edit displays that information in the column header as shown here. Both foreign key and unique key information require accessing the DB2 catalog and thus use additional resources. The commit options follow. Auto commit when pressing enter carries some risk while enabling autosave adds convenience. Lowercase support for object names is for convenience. Here is an example. A table name is entered with lowercase letters. The ensuing error message indicates table not found, but its name is actually in uppercase. The last four items on this panel should be reviewed on a table-by-table -table basis and set accordingly. Additional options are shown by pressing F8. Similarly, the remaining settings also should be reviewed on a table-by-table -table basis and set accordingly. With the defaults and user parameters set, we now choose option 2 for editing. The first area allows for entry of the table to be edited. The next area allows specification of selection criteria to limit the number of rows brought into the editor. For detailed information, please view the module on Using Selection Criteria. The last group of options should be reviewed for the table to be edited. To learn more about audit trails, click on the button shown. The last entry on the panel allows specification of a relationship file. To learn about relationship files, please view the Relationship Facilitator module. To learn how to use a relationship file in the editor, please view the related Browse Edit module. Here we have entered the editor in Table Viewing mode. The number of rows fetched is shown to the upper right. Column information is shown at the top. Similar to other editors, there is an area to enter primary commands and an area to enter line commands. The key values are shown in a different color as they are protected. The different color to the far right indicates that the data shown is partial and the screen must be scrolled to reveal the entire column. Function keys 7 and 8 
are used for up and down scrolling, and function keys 10 and 11 are used for left and right scrolling. Here we enter the row primary command to change to row viewing mode, which displays one row at a time. In this mode, function keys 7 and 8 are used for up and down scrolling within the columns of this row, and function keys 10 and 11 are used for scrolling to the previous row and the next row. Entering the profile command displays the profile parameters that may be changed from within the editor and when the changes will take effect. For more detailed information about the numerous primary and line commands, please view the additional related modules. For those who prefer to use the CUA menu, those options are available from within the editor. This concludes this module. Thank you.